place where we're going to have our jersey with pride. First, let's start with our cheerleader, Miss Olivia Herba Herbonowitz. Her parents are Emily and Jake. Her siblings are Happy and Ellie. She's being escorted by her parents. She's been in cheerleading for one year. Her most memorable moment was when I was cheering for the last football game. Other clubs include art club, her favorite teacher is Mr. Faust, her favorite holiday is Christmas, her favorite subject is U.S. history. She admires her family the most, and she plans to go to college after high school. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Olivia Urbanowitz. And now for the members of our basketball team. First, Mr. Andrea Guad. His parents are Ryan and Lee Seaver. His siblings are Grace and John. He's being escorted by his parents. He's been in basketball for one year here at Culver High School. His most memorable moment was killing a mouse in the Argus locker room. Other clubs here at Culver include FSA and Art Club. His favorite teacher is Mr. Skiles. His favorite holiday is Christmas. His favorite subject is weight. He admires his parents the most. And he plans to go to college, hopefully in the United States after high school. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrea Quas. Next, Mr. Brady Kinderman. His parents are Amy and Clayton, and he is escorted by his parents. He's been in basketball for three years here at Culver and has played her once. His most memorable moment is coming back from injury and being able to play with his special group. Other activities at Culver include football, baseball, art club, and choir. His favorite teacher is Mrs. Darrow. His favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. His favorite subject is math. He admires his grandpa the most. He plans to go to college after high school. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brady Kinderman. And last for our basketball team, Mr. Jack Rogers. His parents are running his estate. His siblings are Jake and Dana. He's being escorted by his parents. He's played for four years in basketball and once at Culver and lettered four times. His honor is Athlete of the Week. His favorite moment is the Bell Game. Other activities include football, choir, and calf club. His favorite teacher is Mr. Clink. His favorite holiday is Christmas. His favorite subject is anatomy. He admires his brother and sister the most. And his plans after high school to attend college at either Purdue, Ball State, or Miami of Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jack Rogers. And last for our band, Mr. Nemo Haschel. His parents are Debbie and Greg. He's being escorted by his parents. He's been in the band for seven years and lettered three times. His honors are all district, all region, IMEA, state, solo, and ensemble. His most memorable moment is breaking my stick in half at the Indy 500 parade practice. Other activities include Cap Club and NHS. His favorite teacher is Mr. Crittenden. His favorite holiday is Halloween. His favorite subject is band. He admires his parents the most and plans after high school to attend Ball State University studying music performance. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nemo Haschel. Culver Community High School would like to congratulate these seniors and thank them and their parents for their dedication to Culver Athletics and being part of the Cavalier family. Please give these seniors and their parents a big round of applause. Congratulations to our 2024 seniors, Liv Urbanowitz, Adria Guas, Brady Kinnernay, Jack Rogers, and Nemo Haschel. Thank you. 
Well, let's begin tonight with the starting lineups first for the visiting Bremen Lions. A senior, number 20, Camden Hickman. A freshman, number 24, Chase Devine. A junior, number 30, Tyrus Graverson. Another junior, number 32, Silas Ladig, And another junior, number 40, Aiden Hunziker. Matt Miller is the head coach of the Lions. Cavaliers, different jersey numbers tonight. Starting with the senior, number four, Brady Kinderney playing guard. Other senior, number 21, Jack Rogers. A junior forward, number 15, Logan Claudell. Sophomore guard, number 20, Jonas McEwen. And a senior guard, number 23, from Spain, Adria Guaz. So. Nice crowd tonight, though. Yes. You're talking about probably the best crowd I've seen all year long. Oh, definitely. So obviously, you bring in uh, youth cheerleading. Add about 80 cheerleaders to that. I told Parents are coming. That's awesome. I told Mike, next year, we need every game needs to either be a junior night or a promotional night. Absolutely. Cool atmosphere. So the Lions win the tip and immediately in the hands of Hickman. He will get it to Devine. Devine will bring it across the timeline. Looking to go somewhere with it. Uh, eventually winds up in the hands of Graverson. Graverson with it on the baseline. Gets it to Devine. Devine from three. That one's good. I know he uh, did very well against Triton this week just as well. I heard his name on the radio quite often. Uh, obviously, for a freshman, he's pretty smooth. You can have all those. <laughs> nice find there in short corner. One batted out of bounds. I think off the hands of Logan oh, Claudel. I thought that was off the hands of them, but... Obviously, maybe Logan got it. I'm also very disorganized here, so I was half looking. Could be wrong. It just looked like after he missed the shot that they they tipped it out, but all well. So, Divine, well, excuse me, that is um, Graverson with it. Now Divine. Back to Ladig. In the corner is Hickman. Skip pass over to Divine. He gets it to the elbow. Back to Devine, over to Graverson. Graverson drives, kicks out, eventually around the horn here. It's going to wind up going out of bounds. Did a good job sharing the basketball, but they probably need a little bit more selfish to go ahead and take the shot. <laughs> but obviously, uh, being patient, working the basketball, hitting that high post is, is big for him. So not a bad offensive possession there. So Rogers with it. Gives it to Kinderney. Over to, K uh, excuse me, Jonas McEwen. He takes the three. Off the front of the rim, rebounded by Claudel. Claudel goes up and gets fouled. And that nice foul job. is going to be on Hunziker. Second time in a row, Logan's done a nice job crashing the boards and getting to the offensive glass. It's the long sleeves. Yeah, it's a, a different look. Normally you have a nice tight long sleeve white shirt that's a little baggy for him. So, again, old school, 2008 style, right? <laughs> I didn't remember anybody wearing that. <laughs> I didn't even know that was allowed. Yeah, I didn't know you to wear long sleeves. I guess I've never seen anybody really yeah, do it. Back then, it didn't happen. Like the shooting sleeve, maybe. That, yeah. That was common, but the full cotton. Offensive rebounds eventually going to wind up in the hands of Rodgers. Rodgers is going to try to go up with it. Steps through. Ends up getting a foul called there. 
Bremen clientele wanted to travel there, and it looked like he hopped quite a bit, but lots of contact as he was trying to step through. Coach Miller asking a question about. <laughs> yeah, they always, you know, obviously our last game against Triton, there's a lot of travels every time Jack touches. He does a really good job of doing a slow Euro, and it looks like a travel, but it's not. So he does a great job with step throughs. Uh, lane violation. So first one's good, second one ends in a lane violation, so he'll get a, another shot here. And that one's gonna be rebounded by, that was Leidig. Graverson, oh, yeah. Devine, intercepted by Gwasp. Looks to take it, goes up. Euro. Yes. Puts it in. Shots no good, bounces around. Kinnerney on the floor. Oh, don't roll over. He rolls over, they're gonna call travel or not? Oh, jump ball, all right. Wasps, the six foot senior, foreign exchange student from uh, Orca, Spain. Know his family's watching tonight. He made sure to ask me if the game's gonna be on Culver TV. Get it Cross in for, for three. Ah. Oh, Logan get caught for a push off there. See if he calls on 33. Yep. So that is gonna be on Cordell. Coach Evans dropped off the alternate uh, number. Nice pull up jumper for Devine there from the elbow. Old school style, good shot fake step. So, Rogers controls it here to McEwen. Back to him, he'll take one from the volleyball line, chooses not to, eventually gets it to Kinnerney. Back to Rogers in the corner, he'll pull this one. No good, it's gonna be rebounded by McEwen. Nope. Gloss for three, no good, winds up, in the, winds up in the hands of Devine. Cavaliers looking, continue the press. Step around to Devine to Hickman. That is Leidig, shot from short corners, no good. Rebounded by Claudel. McEwen looks to take a three, gives it back to Rogers. Rogers drives in, pulls up from the elbow, puts it in. Good job attacking by Jack. Obviously the three point shot didn't work for him last time. Good adjustment by Jack. Six to five's your score. Rogers. Picks that one off out of the air. That's a football Drives interception. In. Yeah, 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 good call. I agree. Yep, good call. Lowered the shoulder. And I think we got a timeout coming here. 30 second timeout coming from the Lions. They're going to take a timeout, and so will we. Warm. We'll be right back. Shooter's gym. Anytime it's warm, shooter's gym. So, Devine with it. Gets it to Graverson. Graverson down to Hunziker. Eventually back around. Hunziker, Devine, Devine from just outside the elbow. Around, no good. It's going to be rebounded and pulled down by Claudel. Over to Rogers. Height in the game now for the Cavaliers. Skip pass over to Kennedy. Down to the corner to Gloss. Gloss for three. No good. It's going to be rebounded by Leidig. 
Little outlet to Divine, then to Graverson. Graverson will look to attack here. Kit is going to kick it out to Hunziker. Hunziker to Leydig, intercepted by David Hyde. Hyde will go up for the layup. And nice up and finish. in. Good finish by David there. Little stutter step on the jump stop, but got away with it. And nice power move. Cavaliers continuing the press here. Divine with it. Cross court, that is Leydig. Hickman with the ball. Divine, Leydig. Back in the corner to Hickman. Hunziker looks to get it out. Eventually gets it to Divine. Divine down to Graverson and Graverson for two. That is height. Rogers. Kennedy for three from the logo. No good. Ball bounces around. You get a loose ball on the floor. Is uh, that is Lady and Claudel. So good hustle play there by Logan Claudel. That'll go uh, in favor of the Lions. Mass substitution for the Cavaliers as well. Uh, the Kuhn boys and Ethan Binion come in for Brady Kinderney as a senior and Guasp as a senior. Ooh. Lady with it. Eventually winds up in the hands of Divine. Divine's going to get fouled on the arm there by Height. Also in the game is Luke Kincaid for Bremen. Ooh, Ooh, almost a five count. I was say that was first, that. A, first a two three zone on a side out of bounds. I don't know if I've seen that one before. Divine's three bounces around. It's eventually rebounded by Hunziker. Correction, that's Graverson. He'll get fouled. Don't know if you noticed it. It looked like all the cover did a decent job boxing out, but everybody just looked at the ball. Nobody went for it. Who is 31? Binion. <laughs> for us, yeah, Binion. Now, I may have been able to tell you Binion was 32. <laughs> you take one away from that, you get me all confused. All right. Oh. Nice pass. That shot blocked by Caleb McEwen. Rogers with it. Looks to push it the other way. Gets it down in the corner. It's eventually going to get it to Jonas. Mc uh, that is Caleb. Sorry. Yeah, Caleb. Caleb. No, that is Jonas. Over to Caleb. Back to Jonas. And Jonas had the block. He was when they got the block. Okay. Not Caleb. Okay. Time for haircuts again, gentlemen. <laughs> That pass is intended for Binion, stolen away by the Lions. Slide over, Jack. Divine to Graverson. Graverson wide open to the basket for two. We have a lot of our bottom of our zone planes extremely high, and that's obviously going to open up that short corner low. Hopefully we can make that adjustment. Jack gets a little bit lower. I know it looks like Ethan is the one that's responsible for that, but it's not on Ethan there. Rogers, McEwen, mm, no good. good. Rebounded by Kincaid. Graverson with the ball. Brings it across the 10 second line, looks to dive here, kicks it out to Hickman. Hickman across court, that is Leydig. See if they go for one shot Hickman again. Divine looks to drive baseline. It'll wind up in the hands of Rogers. Caleb McEwen with it. To Rogers. One second to go. Throws up one. No good. So at the end of the first quarter, your score is eight to nine in favor of the Lions. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. So, looks like the, <laughs> the mascot's getting uh, ambushed up top there. Max the Cavalier is, uh, had to go into his little lair. We got some boys outside knocking on the door. <laughs> so McEwen with it, 
gets it to Rogers. Rogers back to him. McEwen drives baseline, looks to kick. Eventually finds height, height for three. Looks good. In and out. Good skip. He gets pass his own there. rebound. Hands off to Rogers. Rogers from the logo, no good. Eventually he's going to wind up in the hands of Graverson. Graverson to Kincaid. Kincaid gets balked by height. David's very good at that run under. He always gets a piece of the ball. Obviously very quick handed, so does a nice job. Let's see if we have the replay there. So now it is Divine over to Leidig. No, excuse me, Hickman. Hickman, Graverson, back to Hickman. Brings it through, back and forth in the lane as Hickman kicks out to Divine. Divine from three, no good. It's going to be rebounded by Claudel. Height for three. That one looks good too, but off the front of the iron. Loose ball on the floor. Eventually, he's going to wind up in the hands of Logan Claudel on a oh, jump ball. And then gets bopped in the head. He's going to get coconutted. Doesn't phase him. No ball. Lions possession. Divine. Hickman. Correction, Graverson. Divine. Kincaid with it. Back to him. He'll step through, get it back to Kincaid. Kincaid will get blocked again, but it looked like a foul there, and indeed they'll call it from the backside. Good ball movement. <clears throat> Obviously, number 12 there needs to probably take that up right away besides hesitating. Kin is it Kincaid? Yep, Luke, Luke Kincaid. Yep. Be a little bit more aggressive himself and just take it straight up. So that's going to be Binion's second foul. Wasp and Caleb McEwen comes in for Rogers and Binion. This might be the first time I've seen Jack come out all year. <laughs> how many how many basketball games does that make this week for Culver? Just in general, close to ten, right? <laughs> it's been a lot because we've had four games in six days for boys varsity. And then you had three days in a row. Yep. The sixth, sixth grade, grade had three, two, two, two days in a row. row. So in the last week, it, it's getting up Fifth there. Fifth grade had two. So, I mean, there's been a lot of games, home games. All just about to come to an end, right? Yeah. You only got a couple weeks left of the season? Yep. Next week's it for middle school girls. Week after that's it for sixth grade and fifth grade. So it is coming to a, a close. Almost springtime. Sports Spectacular coming up on the 15th. Always a great time of the year. Get that springtime, spring break, Sports Spectacular, spring sports start. Gwasp with a rebound. Goes to Jonas McEwen. Back to Gwasp in the corner. He'll take a travel. Yep. <laughs> Looked like James Harden like. <laughs> Caught it and then did his step step. Yep, yep I thought so. I didn't hear what the cheer was. Take his whistle. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, now give oh, it back. Now they say, make give up it call. back to him. I like it. Keep his whistle and see if they say it. Oh. Uh, I like it. It's okay. Yep. You, you make it right. That's, can't ask for much more than that. Oh, he likes that spot, I guess, huh? Another jump ball there. The most jump balls in a varsity boys game since 1973. Oh, wow with three tonight so far. With five minutes left to go in the uh, second quarter. McEwen gets it down into Claudel off the front of the rim. Oh. oh, yep, frustration foul. So Claudel second, Hickman, Leidig, excuse me, Graverson, Leidig, Hickman's number 20. He's going to cut through here as Devine drives to the free throw line, kicks out, and that is 
Silas Leidig for three. And we must say, we've been stuck on eight for a long time. So Coach Evans will take a timeout. Talk with the boys, and we'll be right back. This timeout sponsored by the Army National Guard. Army National Guard, always ready, always there. For more information, call Sergeant Patrick Dobson at 574-261-2860. Excuse me, 2806. So Cavaliers back in action here. Good set play there by That's the Cavaliers to get it down to Jack for the block. It's going to be Rodgers for two. Lady kind of reminds me of Lamer a little bit. Was that was it Zach Lamer? Foul's going to be on Caleb McEwen. Coach Evans got his dance moves on tonight. <laughs> you know, he's off on the sideline. I was just trying to hear what he said. Mimicking a moving screen, so he's kind of showing, he's dancing on that sideline to show him how it went. Leidig to, or excuse me, that was Divine to Leidig. Rebounded by Hickman. Divine again for three, and he'll get that one to go. That boy's going to be a pretty special player growing up as a freshman. He's pretty smooth and confident. Leading score for the Lions coming in at 15.9 points a game. Three ball by Jack Rogers is good. Hickman with it. Drives in the lane, loses it. Oh. They're going to get, uh, is that going to be I'll take Logan again? Oh, nope, Logan, yep. Could have been either one. They both put their hands down low and reached in besides getting their hands up. Again, officials nine times out of ten are going to call it anytime your hands go down. I like the fact that they called it on the baseline though, because he didn't, because he lost the ball. Yep. And I don't, I don't think there's an argument for a shooting foul there. That's going to be Lady. I got to keep remembering that 32 is Lady. Yep. That one's stolen by uh oh, Kinnerney. Uh oh. Yep. So that foul will be on Kennedy, which I believe is his first of the night. That'll send Hickman to the line. Hickman's first one's good. Second one up and in. Shooter's roll. Cavaliers bring it down very quickly. Look to get it up. Finger roll from Rogers is good. Nice job getting downhill by Jack Rogers there and finishing off the glass. That's something he's been struggling with the last couple games, so it's nice yeah. to see him maybe start finishing again. Divine with it. It's going to be over to Leidig. Hickman, Divine, Divine for three, buries it. Kennedy with it. Guas for three, top of the key. That looked off off his hands. Rebounded by Leidig. It's going to be Graverson. There's Spins through, gets there. stolen by. Oh, oh, that should be intentional. Yep. Yep. That's the right call. Yep. By, de by definition, definitely. That was the right call. That was a hard foul here. Yes. Going for the ball. Yes. That was not going for the ball there. It was a right. breakaway. Right. So, again, not that I agree with how hard the foul was or anything right. like that, but that was at the ball compared to not. Yep, exactly. In different levels of basketball, that would be a flagrant maybe. Yes. The one that, that 
Kinnerney yeah, had. You have a flagrant one versus a, probably a flagrant two, honestly, where that one would be. Right. The official, I, I like Coach Evans' attempt here to try to get to try to get uh, <laughs> the bucket to go in. They talked about it, said it was on the floor, which it was. Yeah, he did not go for a hand. He went two hands to his back. Right. And that, that's that's the type of foul that when I said back in the old days when we had the bonus that you would double, you know, you would yep. kind of wrap somebody up just to, hey, show the yep. official I'm trying to foul here. That wasn't. Yep. But in this situation, we're not in a game situation like that. Yep. So that that's intentional. Yep. <laughs> So McEwen with the ball. Good idea, just got to squeeze it through. It's called a double dribble there. I didn't see that, I missed that one. I didn't either. I'm gonna go back and check the replay. I know Coach Miller's upset, but he's he's talking to the other official who didn't make the call. So he's like, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> I didn't make that call. I'm gonna cut here, see if we can show you the play. Got it. Nice set play, little double flare. Rogers for three. Is good. Euro, yep. It's fun. It's fun when you have a full gym. As I say, we're just that you saw all this. Fans, this is good stuff. fans and coaches and, <laughs> and cheer blocks are getting after it. And somewhat different from the bell game because the bell game, everybody's just trying to hold back from fighting each other. Yes. It seems like yep. <laughs> the tension is so high. A lot high. of aggression there. Yeah, there's so much aggression. This one is just cheering. Just, yeah, competing. Yeah, fun. So now we have Logan and Ethan with three fouls each. Small lineup in for us, see how we do. And that's what's gonna hurt us is boards. Here Coach Miller said keep attacking. That is Hickman with that same looking step that uh, Gwasp had earlier. Vine for three, that one's good. I'll give credit to number 44 there on uh, Bremen. That's two offensive rebounds in that possession. Keeps it alive. Ball tipped there by Graverson. McEwen with it. He's going to dive in. A little contact, no call. That's going to be rebounded by Rogers. That was Ladig on the shot. 1-11 left to go here in the first half. Good Kicks kick it out, out to Gwasp. Nope. Short there. Got to hit one of those. Stolen away by Rogers. Loose ball. They're going to let him play. I like it. And that's going to be put back. And that is, got to go to the roster, Anthony Torres. Third one for Torres on offensive rebound. Uh-oh. Yep, that same travel. Catching it and then stepping. Forty-three point four seconds left to go here. Twenty twenty-eight game. Little. I think uh, Coach Evans will be happy to get out of the half here. Oh yeah, six-zero run Just right now for Bremen at the end, and it's more due to offensive rebounds. Yeah. Yeah. Officials talking to, to Brady, kind of threw the ball. I would assume he's coming out. Yep. So it is Devine and Hickman. That ball is going to be kicked by Height. Got to get a stop here. Try not to give up a score, make it a 10 point halftime lead. Keep it in single digits. Score, stop, score, right? Yeah, I don't, you think the uh, question is, are they going to hold it for one or not? You know what I mean? When it comes down to last time, they took a quick shot and we scored. We'll see if they, they hold. Hickman, Devine, Devine for three. No good. 
Jump ball, the fourth jump ball of the game, possibly the fifth. Devine with it, over to Graverson. Graverson to Leidig. Ooh, got away with the walk. Torres, Graverson, drives the baseline, gets out, kicks it out to Leidig, Leidig swings it. Uh, Devine's gonna lose it, but grab it back, takes a jump step, goes up, no good. It's gonna be batted out of bounds by, I think, McEwen, the officials agree. Point nine seconds left to go. What's the what's the tip rule? Point three. Point three. Okay. So they could catch and shoot. Shouldn't have been that though. So I don't think uh, he should be able to catch it, come down and shoot it. Yeah. Trevor. So at halftime, your score is twenty to twenty-eight in favor of the Lions. So. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. No halftime winners, so only one this year. Shout out to Braden. Or not, Braylon. Uh, yeah, Braylon. Sorry, not Braden. Braylon. Um, Jackson. Braylon Jackson. Only winner so far in two years. I think we should do that at the eighth grade game. Half court shootout. Whose ball here? It White is ball. our ball. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Frustrating. That out of bound, knocked out of bounds by um, Devine. Torres starting the game in the second half. We got good energy, honestly, at the end of the second quarter. Real good energy. Devine, Torres, Leidig, Hickman, and Graverson. Wasp for three. He might be 0 for 7 tonight so far. He needs to find the bucket on one of them. Get his confidence going. Good hands. Oh! oh. I think it's just position. So that's going to be Fidel's fourth. Another offensive rebound. Oh. Yep, nope. They smacked down. I don't know if it was on Jack. It might have been on Ethan. Oh, but I thought the ball came loose under... It was a loose ball there when the whistle blew. Yeah, they definitely smacked down. Better yet, can't give up the offensive rebound off a free throw. Yeah, Box out and get the rebound. You're right. That's the best way to avoid that to begin with. So, it is Hickman. Devine for three. Buries it. Might be his fourth on the night, yes or no? Yes, it is. Rogers. Height. Rogers looks to drive. And a timeout called by the Cavaliers. We'll be right back. The Cavalier Spirit Spot, located inside Culver Community Middle High School, is your official supplier of Culver Community apparel and gifts. The new student-run store is now open during all home varsity basketball and wrestling events. Shop through the hundreds of in-stock items or talk to one of the student employees about placing a custom order today. The Cavalier Spirit Spot, your spot for the spirit. Welcome back here. 
20 to 32 is your score. It'll be call over ball after the timeout. Height with it. Back to Kennerney. Spacing looks weird here. Three ball by Rogers. No good. Rebounded by Gwasp. Back in the hands of Jack. He's going to get it over to Kennerney. Kennerney thought about it, decided not to. Down inside to Binion. Good kick out. Gwasp for three. Still can't get that one to fall. Yep. So that's Kennedy's second. Divine to Graverson, Torres. Ooh, one dribble in the corner scares me. <laughs> Divine again. Oh. oh. I thought they were going to call a foul, first of all, didn't, and then gave us the ball. Guess we'll take the gift. Good job by that official. He was right on top of it. Too. Like, there was no hesitation no, in that call. No, it he, wasn't. It was, I here thought it is. we touched it there, too. Like, I, I thought for sure that would have went off us. So Rogers with it. Yeah. A little bit of foot drag there. Height for three looks. Man, those are looking good coming out of his hand. Graverson finally get, gathers it, gives it to Devine. Devine's going to be guarded by Height. He's going to lose on the other side of the line. You're going to say they tipped it. I say he did yeah, not. Yeah, this official said. He did not tip it. He didn't. I didn't think he did this either. This guy will be on it because he's closest to the ball. It was not tipped. It was a crossover. He's correct. Good job. Good yep. job getting it right. Give that guy a semi-state game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say both those officials on that side do usually a really good he's job. He's holding court out here today. Like yep, he's he, telling people what's up. On top of everything. Do you know who the crew leader is? I don't. Um, I should, which is sad, but I don't. Roger shots no good. It's going to wind up in the hands of Graverson. Torres back to Graverson. Skip pass over to Devine. He's got a one dribble pulled up from about 15 feet. Did Devine get, I think Devine might have got stepped on by Kinnerney, or not Kinnerney, I'm sorry, Binion. He stepped over him, I know that. He did hit the ground hard. Kennedy is going to draw the body foul on Devine. Saved by Binion, winds up in the hands of Rogers. He's going to go for the first down. And again, you know, they're, I know they're calling for travel, but it's just a slow yeah. Euro makes it look like travel. He's taking two steps. You're just not used to seeing somebody go that slow. You know what I mean? Slow with that Euro, really step, step. We said on Tuesday night, uh, or Wednesday night, Jason Groves wasn't complaining about it but the other fans, the fans were. So 
it probably wasn't a travel. Exactly. Otherwise, he would be on top He'd of it. He'd be on it, yep. Well, that's our first point probably in at least seven minutes. Graverson, Devine, Ladig. Ball's going to be tipped around, grabbed by McEwen. McEwen gets it to Rogers. Rogers to Height. Height for three. Looks good. Oh, off the front of the rim, rebounded by Graverson. It's Ladig. Devine drives the baseline, tries to go up and under. Just was in a weird position there. I think he created a little bit of that contact, but good shot attempt there. Yeah, probably could have dished it off to Torres for yeah. an open look. Yeah. A guy like me could have never turned my body to get back <laughs> under the backboard like that. Yeah, there's a lot of twist and torquing on that one. So that's tipped around to Graverson. And we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Sounds like it's your microphone. I think it is. Well, good thing this is our last game of the year. <laughs> we can send them back to get refurbished. It's giving weird feedback. There you go. That's foul number 20. There we got it. Okay. So just won't touch it. Now just don't move your head. Which is really hard because I like to mess with it a lot. I constantly. Deep three, in and out. Rebounded by Binion. He'll lose it off his fingertips out of bounds. Hickman, Devine, Ladig, Ladig from 15, in Great and out. Shot. Wide open on the backside, McEwen. Oh, See that's a double dribble. dribble. Definitely a double dribble and a travel. <laughs> hey, kitchen sink going in there. <laughs> Unless they do the whole, you know, possession thing that I, drives me nuts as a coach. Yeah, I don't. I think he definitely got away with the double dribble and a travel and a on that No, one. I agree. So that foul is on, I believe, Caleb McEwen. Yes. I think that official's name is Kyle Smith. I don't know what happened to the mops. Oh, no. You know, I leave for one second and the job goes undone, you know? I swear today they were there in the corners. I thought they were there too. Hmm. Somebody stole one, the mops. One of them is over there behind the cheerleaders. I see one. You see one down there? Yeah. One of the other ones tucked in the corner back Could here. Be. Could be. Oh, yep. I see you now. Yep. That should be Max's job. Agree. The NBA and uh, college basketball, they pay guys every game just to oh, sit there. Oh, got lucky there. That was off of Jack. So you know a foul's coming. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought for sure there. 
Next foul goes to the double bonus. I obviously couldn't see there being in the corner. I say I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. Seems confident, whatever he's calling. So <laughs> their coaches didn't say anything. So I imagine it's probably yeah. they were right there. Rogers gets it to Caleb. Over to Jonas. Jonas looks to. Eventually gives it back. Looks again, gets it to his brother. Three ball from Caleb is good. Well, only down seven. It <laughs> I mean, might be just what stop the Cavaliers be needed right there. I remember one time we went scoreless in the third and well, score only scored three in the third, then won a trophy. So yeah. it's been done before. It happens. We were still up one though. <laughs> yeah, it's we weren't down seven. Think about that. We scored three points in the entire second half, or in the entire third quarter, and still were up ahead, like yeah. the lead that we Yep. So at the end of three, 27. by Kayla McEwen. Gets it to Rogers eventually, but it was off the spike to Binion. So Cavaliers will control it. Skip pass there to Caleb. Wasp with it, attacks. Caleb for three, that's gonna be tipped out by, that was Binion, I believe. Yes, it was. Wide open in the corner is height. Wide open is height. Ooh, that looks short. Yep, a little extra height on that shot. What? So, that was an interesting swing of events there. Uh, it'll be timeout, Bremen. Good cut. Good cut by, I believe that is Graverson. Wide open is McEwen. Good call out from the back side. Only a nine point lead for Bremen here. Fairly low scoring game. Twice in a row. Nice cut. again. Cut across your face. Odell hit a three the other night against Triton. And he gets a deflection out of bounds here. Graverson comes in averaging 8.3 points a game. Quas, loose ball there. Loose ball there. Eventually in the wow. hands of Hickman. Nice break. Good hustle by everybody and a good break. The bounces seem to go the Lions way there. 
We had everybody on the floor. So Rogers with it. Stolen by Devine. Another time out here. We got to call a uh, media timeout for uh, Nemo to get his drum solo in. Yeah. Kennedy back in the game. Three from Rogers, rolls off the front. Rebound there by Graverson. Oh. Did they trip over each other? Gloss for three. <laughs> finally put his hands up. I finally hit one. <laughs> Don't know if you saw his hands there. Go ahead and keep hitting them. Only five more. We'll be in the lead. Graverson drives baseline, takes it up. Oh, the hang on the rim. The hustle was respected there. Good cut, ball rolls in. Deep three. Height back in the game for Jonas McEwen. That is Leidig. Hickman puts that one in. Well, always a seven point lead has blown up to 21 quickly. Yep. Turnovers to scores. This quarter's turnover to scores. There we go. So 30 to 53 is your score. The next game for both teams, I believe. What? He. Okay. So he said it was a full, but our guys were on the court standing. He wanted to make sure it wasn't oh, okay. full. The next game for both of these teams, I believe, is indeed the sectional. Let me pull up my, I know for Culver, at least, it is the sectional. I bet that would be correct for Bremen yes. as well. Same for Bremen. Bremen will play the winner of game one. Um, obviously, they're in 3A sectional 18. Culver in 1A sectional 50 which will be hosted at Triton High School. Um, talking with those guys back and forth all year, Triton does a great job with the Triton Trojan Sports Network. You can find them on the IHSAA Champions Network, and they are going to cover that entire sectional. So the, and I believe there are regionals are also hosted there. Yes, it is. So the Cavaliers advance 
uh, to the regionals um, that will also be on the IHSA Champions Network. So that is Leydig again. That's pretty smooth looking on that one. Catch and shoot. Floater by Height. Wow, it's the first foul of the quarter. That's impressive. Foul number 33, uh, the Cavaliers. Almost a 10-0 run here for Bremen. Yeah, 44-30, I know you talked about that. And then next thing you'll look up. That was 27-34 at the end of the third. Yeah. Freeman's at what, 22 points in fourth quarter alone? A lot of runouts. Be interested to see how many of those are uh, Graverson and Hickman. Or excuse me, Graverson and uh, Leydig. That shot, if I can find my roster again. Joe Hopkins, finally. Graverson on the rebound. And another timeout. Substitution. Did they call it to get yep, that one? Okay. Substitution. I like that. If that's what you want to do with it. Yep. You, is, it, is that a rule change recently? Yeah, it has been. Because I know there was back in the day where, like, let's say we would want to do that. If they wanted to take the timeout, yep. they were able to. And they to. usually still ask that, even with that piece. I would assume right now, Mr. Uh, Coach Kyle is like, let's go. Let's let it run. He's got a minute. Try not to get to 35 here in the... Well, unfortunately, the box score, the the final score, I don't think will reflect not how good of a game yeah. this was. Not three for three quarters was yeah, fine. Yeah, three quarters. Obviously, Culver got a little foul trouble at the beginning of the third. Second foul of the quarter. Foul number 10 of the Cavaliers, David Hines. That's his second foul of game second. Coach gets Adria Guasp. Guasp, the six foot senior from Aorca, Spain. Over the back. Good ball movement. Inside out. Makes a difference. High is good. So that does it for this one where your final score is 35-58 in favor of the Lions. That's also going to do it for this season or this year of Culver TV broadcasting. Make sure you're... Uh, watching CulverTV.com for all of our, uh, you can go back and watch any of the games over the last year. And